Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on seed plants. Objectives for today's lesson are, number one, identify the characteristics of seed plants. Number two, explain the structure and function of roots, stems, and leaves. And number three, compare and contrast gymnosperms and angiosperms. Let's start by talking about seed plants and what characteristics all seed plants share. Seed plants are made of or contain vascular tissue, which is the tissue used to transport water, food, and nutrients throughout the plant. Uh, the vascular tissue is actually found throughout the leaves, stems, and roots. The, another characteristic of seed plants are that they are a major source of food, clothing, and shelter for humans and other animals. Uh, when we think about uh, fruit trees, those fruits have, have seeds inside and that's a source of food. And when we think about things like cotton, um, they help us to make clothes and obviously lumber from different trees uh, help us to make our homes that we live in. Another characteristic is that, of course, all seed plants produce seeds. The function of seeds is basically a way to carry the reproductive cells in order for that plant to make more of its own kind. Inside of that seed is uh, what we call an embryo and stored food for that embryo in order for it to grow once it's been fertilized. Uh, last uh, characteristic that all seed plants um, have is that they're grouped uh, according to whether or not they have flowers or they don't. So seed plants can either be non-flowering or flowering plants. Non-flowering plants have a special name and they're called gymnosperms. Flowering plants are called angiosperms and we'll discuss those. Let's first talk about leaves. What are leaves, why are they so important, and what are their, what's their structure and function that helps them to carry out um, the functions of the plant. Leaves are extremely important to plants and to all life, really, um, because leaves are the areas of the plant where photosynthesis occurs. Photosynthesis is the process of using sun's energy to produce oxygen and food for the plant. Uh, the plant releases that oxygen into the atmosphere, which helps other animals and other plant lives to survive. So that's why leaves are so important, because they actually are the place where photosynthesis occurs and helps uh, other organisms along with the plant. So photosynthesis is a food-making process for the plant because ultimately the plant makes its own food and that food is a sugar called glucose. Uh, this is a very simple diagram of what's going on in photosynthesis where you have the sun and its uh, energy reaching the plant uh, and the leaves are capturing that energy. Um, and then you also have a uh, atmospheric gas called carbon dioxide, which actually uh, we as, as humans and other animals breathe out into the air and uh, plants are able to use that to help with that photosynthesis process. And finally water, we know that all plants need water and this is why, because once the sun's energy and the gas and the water come together, they go to the leaf and the leaf has a special type of pigment inside called chlorophyll, and that chlorophyll is where the chemical process occurs, and that is uh, where the glucose is formed, and also where the oxygen is released. Um, leaves are, uh, have a special structure to help them to perform its functions. Uh, leaves are made of several layers of cells uh, that come together. And within the, the, the leaf, uh, actually the, the very top layer of the leaf and the very bottom layer of the leaf, 
So if this was just representing different layers of leaves, you have a top layer and a bottom layer. And that top layer and that bottom layer uh, are identified as the epidermis of the leaf. Now the epidermis is important because it helps to protect the leaf. Um, it also helps it to perform its functions by um, capturing that sunlight and those gases and also releasing that gas, the oxygen gas back into the atmosphere. So the way that the epidermis does that is that it has these special little pores and they're called stomata. Stomata are small openings within the epidermis that help to capture and release the gases needed um, in order for photosynthesis to occur. Now, uh, the stomata are actually um, surrounded by guard cells and those guard cells do exactly that. They actually guard the opening and closing, closing of the stomata. The stomata is just the hole, but uh, the stomata isn't always open. For example, um, during the day when the sun is out, plants need sunlight. So those stomata are going to be open during the day when there's sun to capture that sun's energy. But then during the nighttime, they're closed. And the reason why they close is because the stomata is an opening into the plant. So if they don't close, then what's going to happen is that that water inside of that plant is going to start to evaporate away. And that's not good for the survival of the plant. It needs to conserve that water. Now, another uh, characteristic of a leaf is that outside of the epidermis, there's this waxy cuticle. And you have probably seen it if you've ever had a leaf and maybe scratched some of the uh, leaf. It's like this clear kind of coating. Um, it's a waterproof coating that helps again to, for the plant to conserve water so that the water inside of the plant does not evaporate. Another characteristic of leaves is that they hold special organelles or structures called chloroplasts. Now these chloroplasts are small uh, little organelles where the photosynthesis actually occurs. Now, I just told you before that photosynthesis occurs in the chlorophyll. Well, chloroplasts hold the chlorophyll um, for the green, for the plant. And the chlorophyll is a green plant pigment, which is why we have that color of green for our leaves and our stems and our plants. So chlorophylls are kind of like this, um, I wish I had green. They're kind of like this organelle, and they're filled with chlorophyll. 